This is a Rolex Air King from the 1970s. About as simple as it gets, so what could possibly go wrong? The numbers of the bracelet are correct for the age of the watch and this vintage Rolex has folded links. Who knew? Now this watch was given as a gift in the 1970s but the performance now is really indicating that it needs a service. Now Clive and Adrian were car salesmen back in the 1970s and Darren, who sent me this watch, his dad worked with them and they gave him this watch when he left the team having sold loads and loads of cars. Now the movement that you're about to see inside this watch is the Rolex 1520. It's a pretty movement but it's very basic, there are no complications. So it should be plain sailing but when you're making a film like this sometimes problems arise from unexpected directions. And as the French treasure fisherman whose Jeje Le Coutre I've still got would say a voila and oh yeah the reference is a 5500 for those that don't know on watches of this age on the other side between the lugs you will find the serial number but I'm not going to show you that so the first thing that we're going to do is loosen the setting lever screw and take out the stem the next thing is to take the movement out of the case and it's secured by two clamps at the periphery of the movement, just removing those now. And just use a plastic bag to hold the movement in place as I flip it over and take off the case. The dial on this watch has got a really nice patina, you can just see it there. So now we're gonna take the hands off. Again, just use a plastic bag bag to protect, protect the dial and lift off the hands gently with a set of levers. Best way to get the hands off the movement is to use gravity. Just place them on a nice clean piece of paper and then put them in order. I like to put everything in order. Okay moving on to releasing the dial. There are two screws, I'm just showing you one here. There's another one on the other side of the case and then we just lift off the dial gently. And that is a pretty movement. It's coming in closer here, going to take off the dial washer. That keeps the hour wheel that you're seeing me take off now, that keeps that pressed down. Okay, and just putting the movement now, flipping it over so it's dial side down onto the stand and releasing the automatic works. So the screws for the automatic works are blued. Just coming in now with a pair of brass tweezers so I don't scratch the automatic works bridge there and placing it with its screws nice and neatly away. Okay, next thing is to take out the balance. So just removing the retention screw there and carefully, very carefully, putting the balance into a little plastic box with its retention screw and popping that away carefully. Okay, we have to disarm the mainspring. So I'm just pulling a little bit of pressure through the keyless works and moving the click to one side and just letting off any tension there. Actually, there wasn't much on this one. Uh, and I've made a special tool for this. We're going to remove the top wheel. You'll see me come in now with a pair of modified tweezers. The plastic bag is to stop you scratching 
the train bridge and now we're going to do the ratchet wheel. Let's remove its retention screw and remove the wheel. Next the barrel bridge comes off and we're going to take out the pallet fork now so just removing its own bridge there coming in close. Taking out the pallet fork, care is required, oops, dropped it. Now the train bridge, just remove the screws. Come in with a screwdriver of the right side, just to give it a little lift there. And then very carefully again, brass tweezers, lifting that away. And that re reveals the powertrain there. Oh, and it's just classic on this watch. So removing the second wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, and the escape wheel. Flip the movement over, just taking out the uh, setting lever jumper spring and the component that holds all these parts in. And the minute wheel. Okay, I have to be really careful with this one. This is under a lot of tension. Uh, and the yoke for the sliding pinion. Take out the stem. And they are the last two components. The sliding pinion and the setting lever. Now this glass has seen better days and is quite heavily scratched. So we're going to need to replace it with a new one. And the first thing we need to do then is remove the glass and the bezel. For which this tool is really, really useful. Again, we use a plastic bag to protect the case from the jaws of the tool. I just swap it round to my sort of dominant hand there to give it a little bit of torque and torque it up. There we go and pop it off. Nice. Nicely oiled tool as you can hear. And there is the old crystal in the bezel and it pops out backwards like so okay so potentially the mainspring inside this watch has been going for 50 years so time to change it this is the technique for taking the lid off yes and Make sure the arbor isn't catching on the lid when you do this. Otherwise, you might get a bit of a surprise. But just gently lift the lid off to reveal the main spring. And coming in closely, you can see there is a lot of dark material. That is uh, old grease, dried up grease, and that is not going to be helping at all. So lift it out gently with a screwdriver and then holding on very carefully to the barrel, just release the spring. If you don't hold the barrel tightly, it's likely to fly across the room at Mach 8. And then just placing it with the other components. And that is the disassembly complete, apart from the automatic work. So just quickly take those apart. Um, on this caliber there they're slightly more simple than on others the purple on the wheels is Teflon okay time to clean the parts and they're all going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner so let me just show you a few coming in to my nice little tea strainers here which are just perfect for this job Just placing the barrel into one of these compartments.
A nice secure way to clean the balance is to replace it onto the movement before it goes in to the ultrasonic cleaner. So I've, I've just popped it back on and now pop the whole lot into its own little compartment before we put it in the cleaner. In it goes. I actually use three solutions. The one you see going in here is the ultrasonic cleaning solution. Uh, but then I follow that up with a rinse solution and then a third wash with some isopropyl alcohol. That gets the parts minty clean. This is a close up of the Canon Pinion and you can see just how sparkly it is. It is properly clean. So new mainspring, I mentioned the one that's in there that's probably been going for 40 or 50 years. The amplitude is low, so we're gonna breathe new life into the movement by putting a nice new feisty spring in. You need to be careful when you do this. There is the clean barrel and the key thing is to get it in the right way around. This is braking grease and you need to put a small amount on the inner edge of the barrel before you put the spring in and there is the new spring. And coming in close to show you the lubrication of the barrel arbor before I put that back in. So before we get back to the rebuild, I just want to show you this because this watch is mine. This is from my own brand Major and it is the Seawolf and isn't it lovely? Anyway, check out the link in the description. And reassembling the movement, we're going to start with the mainspring barrel, just putting a little bit of lubricant on the main plate and popping the barrel in. Replacing the escape wheel into its jewel, just making sure it's seated correctly and then following up with the fourth wheel and the third wheel. and the second wheel. You may be wondering where the first wheel is. The first wheel is actually the mainspring barrel. You can see the teeth around the barrel there and that is the first wheel in the train. And just jiggling the pivots here because you're going to try and make sure they're all aligned before you put the bridge on. These pivots are very delicate so we need to be careful as we bring the bridge in. We're just going to line it up as best we can. And then there's a certain amount of jiggling about to get the pivots to come through. Okay, so once you make sure all the pivots are in on the train bridge here, um, it's good to give it a little nudge, give the barrel a little nudge. And you can see the train fly into action there. So for the moment we will just do the pivots without a capstone. So a schoolboy error at this point is to forget the setting lever screw and I've just put a little bit of grease on it there. Um, very tiny bit of grease as it goes in but you don't want to forget that because otherwise you're going to have to take off the barrel bridge later which is a hassle so pop that in and then we can pop the barrel bridge back on so before the barrel bridge goes I'm just going to put a little bit of lubrication on the top of the mainspring arbor and back on with the barrel bridge here just making sure it's located properly and then securing it down with T2 
two screws, one at each end. Popping the ratchet wheel back on and just lining that up with the mainspring arbor and then securing it down with its screw. Like so. And you just see the train coming into action there. Popping the crown wheel back on. This is located by three screws. We put two on initially and then we're going to use the third, the one in the middle, to secure a spring. You'll see that in a minute. So just securing the crown wheel down. And replacing the second hand pinion attached to the post, which is attached to the second or the sweep hand. And then that's held in place by a spring, which comes from the center of the crown wheel. It's a little bit fiddly to get it on and it's going to want to turn when you tighten it up. So just carefully placing that on the pinion. Try and get it exact. There we go. So just center that up nicely. I'm just going to stick something here to stop it trying to turn as I tighten it. Get the right size screwdriver. Come in with that. And just tight whoops he said knocking the camera and just tighten that up et voila that's perfect nice good okay so i skipped ahead on uh, this side of the watch a little bit i've popped in the setting lever which you have to do it's a little bit fiddly because you have to put the screw in from the other side and get it to catch there um, I've put in the sliding pinion and the sliding pinion yoke, which is this component here, and the winding pinion here and the stem. So all of that is, there's also this little spring in here, which keeps the sliding pinion yoke um, pushing against the winding pinion, unless you pull the stem out. Okay, back on with the minute wheel. And just securing down the keyless works with the setting lever jumper spring and securing that in place with the two retention screws up nice and close here and onto the pallet fork now this needs lubrication with a specific type of pallet grease you can see me applying it here to the correct faces that's the exit jewel and now the entry jewel and there is too much lubricant on here so what I do is having done it give it a really quick dip in some pure alcohol now it doesn't get rid of all of it but it calms it down so just placing it very very carefully back onto its jewel and having secured it back in place we are now ready for the moment of truth will the watch fire back up so just coming in really really carefully now with the balance you have to locate it properly and carefully. Uh, 
Okay, we have a major, major issue, but it is not with the watch. Uh, my camera just, well, I didn't give up the ghost, but it's not working properly. Um, when I shoot my films, I use this camera here, uh, which is attached to the workshop ceiling. So if you see it shaking on my videos, you know, that there has been an earthquake in Pembrokeshire. But um, this is the monitor I use, this thing here, to shoot the videos, and it don't work. <laughs> it stopped. <laughs> Nightmare. So um, I have checked that the, uh, I don't know whether I can do this actually. Uh, let's see if I can show you through here what it looks like through here. Ooh, no. Uh, let's try that again. Let's turn it on. Hang on. And uh, show you what it looks like through there. Oh, yeah, look. So I can shoot it like that. That's how I am going to have to shoot the rest of this film. Um, what a nightmare, because that is not, that is not as good as shooting it uh, with the, the LCD there. Um, I'm going to have to try and think that one through. Okay, mmm, not good. And here it is, just in the nick of time. I don't know why they called this thing Tombracod. It's really weird. But anyway, Amazon to the rescue.